Migraine is a disease of the trigeminal nerve, and that's depicted for you in this slide. And there are three main branches to this nerve that supply the area around the eye, second region around the cheek and uh, nasal passages, and finally, a sensation to the jaw region and around the ear. This nerve ending is super sensitive in migraine and is firing very rapidly. The structures that it supply includes blood vessels, blood vessels on the surface of the brain, blood vessels in the nasal cavity. The nerve ending causes these blood vessels to become dilated and to produce a throbbing sensation. What we're looking at here is a view looking up a patient's nose with a nasal endoscope, a little telescope used to examine the nasal mucosa. This is the same patient, and she's come back in the midst of a headache. The first view is when she doesn't have a headache, and now she's returned having a severe headache. And she has features that are suggestive of sinus problems with a runny nose and pressure in her facial region and her cheeks. What you can see on the slide is the dramatic change in her mucosa. There's now swelling, inflammation, and fluid on the surface of the mucosa. She gets treated with a medication called sumatriptan. The trade name for that is Imitrex. This is a medicine that's specifically designed to work in migraine. And what we see is one hour after she's treated, her nasal mucosa reverts back to normal. The middle picture is depicting migraine. This is not sinusitis, but rather the effects of a migraine headache. The nerve ending, that trigeminal nerve ending, that supplies the blood vessels in the nasal mucosa has caused these blood vessels to become dilated, to swell, and to ooze out fluid. When she gets given the sumatriptan, it causes the blood vessels to shrink down and it switches off the trigeminal nerve. One of the other areas that the trigeminal nerve supplies are the muscles of mastication. The trigeminal nerve has a motor division that goes to the muscles specifically, and that's shown here in red. This is the brain stem depicted for you on the far side with the branch that's going to the muscles traveling out in that trigeminal nerve with the branch that went down to the jaw region. And it's specifically supplying the masseter muscles that allow you to clench your jaws together and the temporalis muscle that allows a very strong clenching activity. The lateral pterygoid, the little muscle that attaches to the condyle of the mandible, is the one that's used to open the mouth. And this kind of acts as an air break. As we're chewing, the lateral pterygoid starts to contract, pulls the jaw forward, and allows it to drop open. So what we're looking at here in the red bar going up and down is the activity of the temporalis muscle. And that can be measured by placing an electrode over the temporalis. We can measure the muscle activity and what we're seeing here in the green bars is the temporalis muscle contracting very hard for a second and then relaxing and contracting again as the patient is asked to clench their teeth together. The blue bars represent the master muscles. The purple and red bars are neck muscles and they're not active during chewing, so we don't see that activity here. So by measuring this activity, we can use this as a guide after we've put in place a treatment to see if we've been able to diminish that level. So when a patient clenches really hard, that anterior temporalis muscle is the muscle that is mainly involved with that activity, and we could see the muscle activity increasing dramatically in that red bar. When patients are stressed and they're clenching their teeth, this is the presumed mechanism for heightened activity in the trigeminal system. If we have dental interference, such as a, an irritated tooth, this is also going to increase activity in the trigeminal system. So we have two potential mechanisms for triggering migraine by heightening trigeminal nerve activity. One would be dental interference with pain or increased clenching with increased muscle activity. Most migraine attacks begin while the patient is asleep. So between 4 a.m. and 9 a.m., we have 48% of the attacks occurring. Now, when patients awaken with those morning migraines, they usually are fully blown by the time they awaken. 
and using a medicine like the sumatriptan injection, that's the Imitrex injection, the strongest medicine that we have available to break the acute attack. You can see in this study that only about half the patients actually get improvement. So waiting and just treating them acutely is not ideal. If we had a method to stop that headache from occurring while they were sleeping, that would obviously be much better than playing catch up and treating them once the pain occurs. During pregnancy, we have a lot of problems in managing migraine because now we're dealing not only with the mother, but the fetus too. And all of the medicines that we've been talking about are contraindicated in pregnancy. None of these are safe for the fetus. Migraine can worsen during pregnancy, usually in the first trimester, and then it might improve in the latter part of the, of the pregnancy. Uh, methods of treatment presently during in pregnancy are really non-pharmacologic. Physical measures, biofeedback, muscle relaxation. Um, we might use things like magnesium supplements because those are safe. But as I've already mentioned, all the preventative treatments that are prescription are harmful to the fetus. So what other options do we have to treat migraine? Well, the NTI device is a dental device that can fill in a lot of the gaps that I've been speaking about. This device works by preventing the patient from exerting excessive force. It's usually worn at nighttime and when they attempt to clench their teeth by keeping the front teeth separated with the, the dental device, the patient is unable to fully engage the master and the temporalis muscles. So as a result, the trigeminal nerve ending is allowed to rest. Um, over the course of the night. So imagine a patient who developed clenching during their sleep, activating their master muscle and their temporalis muscle, stimulating the trigeminal nerve, and then as a result, triggering a migraine attack that awakens them between 4 a.m. and 9 a.m. In order to prevent that sequence of events, using a device like this, uh, preventing the back teeth from being able to engage, thus relaxing the master and temporalis muscle and switching off the trigeminal nerve allows us to have some control of this uh, nighttime headache developing and presenting as an early morning headache. This is a device that we frequently use during pregnancy as it is safe for both the mother and the fetus. It has no systemic effects. And I'm using it in my practice for patients who have had side effects from the usual list of preventative medications so the list of patients that might be appropriate for a device like the NTI splint, in, in particular the pregnant patient, this is an ideal treatment. Adolescent patients who don't want to be on daily medications that might slow down their thinking or make them tired, interfering with their schoolwork, they could wear this uh, splint at bedtime and uh, manage very well during the day. An elderly patient who may already be on multiple medications for other medical conditions, adding in more medication is often not ideal. So using a non-pharmacological approach, a dental splint is a perfect option. And for any patient who's on multiple medications, this is something we should think about. The refractory patient who's been tried on lots of different medications and is still experiencing headache, again, this would be ideal. Patients who have associated temporomandibular joint dysfunction with their headache. So because of their excessive clenching at nighttime, they've started to damage the temporomandibular joint. Using the uh, dental splint, the NTI, is going to treat both of those conditions. I do find a large amount of my patients that don't want to be on, on oral medications, and then it's very nice to have the option of a non-pharmacological treatment to offer them as well. Now, in some patients, we use uh, treatments like Botox to help us manage their headaches, and I have used this treatment in combination with the NTI splint to help get control of the headaches. And what you can see here is we've injected Botox into the temporalis muscle, reducing the amplitude with the Botox, and then synergistically reducing it further by adding in the NTI splint.